Hey yeah, guys, welcome to episode 38 of Ask Woodford. I'm your host as always, Christian Woodford. Thank you for viewing, subscribing, whatever it's called. <laughs> Let's get it going. As always, this show will be a corker or a cracker. Depends what questions Alex asks. Some questions kick me off, some don't. I don't know. Ask away. If you want to kick me off, ask a question. If you want to see me get fired up, ask your questions. going to get fired up. Some questions might not. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Well, Robbie yeah. Turnbull. Would love to see you do your post and put your thoughts out on altitude rooms. From what I've attempted to research, most rooms just change the oxygen saturation but can't change the pressure. Does this mean this is slightly less effective than natural altitude? Would love to know what type of workout I should be then doing in there. Cardio, weights, after coming out? Um, yeah, I've done a post on altitude, you know there's masks before, so if you remember what episode, put a link, um, a link below to the post we did on Alchi with Jay and I, where I wore the plastic bag over my face. So this is the first thing you do, right? You stand up, you start running. This is gonna mimic, because it's gonna stop the amount of oxygen flow to me. So I guess if I did this, I ran around the pitch, I look like an absolute idiot, but I'm simulating the training mask. Whew. That's the first thing, number one. Number two, which is the most safer option. Get Apparently, according to all my mates, it, it um, made me look better. Yeah, so I got a lot of views. So have a look at it. I wore a plastic bag to prove my point. Um, altitude rooms, they're legit. If they are an altitude room, they're legit. Um, I don't know where he's getting that from because it costs a lot of money to make them. They are legit. I can't give you much more than that. That's that legit. That's legit. Like, I don't know where you want me to go with that. Well, if he wants to know what type of workout he should be doing in there. I'll be honest, you I'm going to be completely honest, you I have no... Like, like any, you could do any training session. It's just going to be harder because the amount of oxygen in the air is less. Okay, now talk, you need to talk to a fucking nerd like Jay. If we had Jay, like a, some nerd, ugly sports science kid, it'd be Jay. Unfortunately, we know how, he's not here. So, um, well, I don't know, I'd have no idea. Ask Jay, you okay. know. But Jay's not here, so Jay's not here. So we do what we want. Jay, you're not here, so unfortunately. You followed your love, Jay, the, all the way to England. Um, and that's it, that's it. You, you love Jay, and I, I facilitate that. I said, Jay, you can go for three months, but we can't last without three months without young Alice. Sweet man. What do you think about him, Brick? I oh, love well, he's a great man. Shut up, Brick. <laughs> 80 cakes, 29. Brick, you love him so much. What if I said something like that to me? What do you think it would? What do you say? Oh, I'd say you're a great man, I don't know. <laughs> but that's the same thing what you said about Jay. So you, 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 do you love Jay more than me? I thought it was Sophie's choice, that one. <laughs> Sophie's choice. Uh, oh, Brick, what would you rather? Do you want me to go with that? Ah, <laughs> okay. oh, here we go. Yeah, uh, next one. All right, 80 cakes, 29. Just wondering if you had. Did you say 80 cakes? I said 80 cakes, 29. That's his name. That's his name, 80 cakes. 80 cakes. A D cakes. A I D Y cakes. That can't be his name. It's on his birth certificate. That's a great name. Love it. Just wondering if you had any, downstairs, if you had an opinion purposes. on the benefits of a high bar squat versus a low bar squat, and whether one should be favoured over another for different reasons. Yeah, good question. Um, so a power lifter. So when we look at um, a squat, this is always interesting. I've, I've trained a lot of athletes, like a lot of athletes. I've only had one oh, I'd say a handful of athletes that have ever just squatted with a low bar. I remember Andrew Maga M Maglio, Magalio, it was a role for like a, um, like a Ivy League school. He literally set up for squat with a low bar. And I'm like, why are you low barring? And he said, what's a low bar squat? And I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck it. If they're comfortable with a low bar, low bar, but you gotta think, the reason why athletes low bar, you gotta think, remember there's two types. God damn it. Two types of athletes, right? That's what the, com the when, when they don't answer the phone downstairs, it comes through to my phone. I'm trying to get it taken off at the moment, but anyway. Um, Two types of athletes. Powerlifted athletes, athletes are not powerlifters, okay? So powerlifters are classified as a strength sport based athlete, right? What I mean by that is lifting is their sport, squat, dead, bench. Now, when a powerlifter low bars, the reason why they're low barring is because they're gonna engage more posterior chain. When they engage more posterior chain, right, they're gonna be able to lift more weight. It's all to do with the mechanical advantage, right? They're leveraging off a mechanical advantage, right? That's why when um, uh, uh, powerlifters, when they deadlift, they deadlift with their hips really low to engage more quads. Well, the reason why they engage, why they want to engage more quads, they're going to lift more weight, okay, and, and less range of motion as well. Hence why they do a low bar, and that, why a lot of them do a sumo stance. It's more of a mechanical advantage, less range of motion. So if you look like a guy, and we're getting the boys at Melbourne String Culture on next week, 
You look at a guy like Jason Stumpus. Jason Stumpus deadlifts something like 280, 285. Look at his range of motion when he deadlifts, when he sumos. Minimal, so small. What about when those guys bench and they take a wide, a wide grip and look at their thoracic extension? It's minimal range of motion. Similar to when they um, uh, low bar squat, they're gonna engage more posterior chain, they're gonna lift more weight. Okay, so yeah, you can use it, but I seem that if you're gonna use it, why the fuck wouldn't you just use a hip dominant movement like a trap bar deadlift? If you're gonna say, well, you wanna use a uh, low bar squat as a variant, well, just you, it's, it's more of a hip, you're gonna engage a fair bit of posterior chain. Wouldn't you use it just a hip dominant movement? Be a lot safer as well. And also as well, think about this. When you do a low bar squat, think about the position you put your shoulder in. Abduction, external rotation. A lot of throwing sport athletes, you don't wanna put their shoulder through that much stress. So think about the stress you're putting on and you got the bar, a high bar's up here, low bar is quite low near the posterior delt. Think about the stress on the shoulder joint through there. Abdu abduction, external rotation. For me, the risk outweighs the reward, especially with athletes that throwing based sport, you don't wanna put any risk on their shoulders. So why the fuck would you do it? You don't need to do it, right? So my suggestion is the only, the only difference is it's a variant and with the low bar, power lifters um, use it more because they can lift more weight, engage more posterior chain. If you're gonna do that for the non-strength sport athlete, my suggestion is fuck it off, use a hip dominant movement. That's my opinion. You don't need to put their shoulder through that much stress. Angus Red, advice on studies next year. Good friend of mine, Jake, Mike, fuck, sorry. A good friend of mine, Jake Watts, is working under your Woodfords and advised me to do an exercise science degree. Any advice would be- Who? Jake Watts. Jake Watts. I know Jake Watts. Oh, it's awkward. I know. <laughs> it's awkward as fuck. Jake Watts. Who the fuck's Jake Watts? Maybe, sorry if I forgot your name. You don't really remember that many people's names anyway. No, I don't at all. You're like you thought Brick was someone like- I thought Brick was Jared for three months. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it. Who okay. cares? Sorry, Jet Brick, I love you. Advice for studies next year. For, for, for what? Exercise science. Anywhere, just get, in, get enroll in a course. Yeah, I couldn't give a fuck where, doesn't matter. M most, listen quickly, most important thing is, you knew I was gonna add this. Most important thing when you coach, we went through, see how I layer this though, see how you, if you, if you, if you watch Ask Woodfits, right? And okay, apart from thinking, A, I'm a psycho, B, I'm a fuckwit, and few of you probably think I'm arrogant, that's fine, that's your insecurity, not mine. Once again, the person who wrote the note still hasn't written back to me, pussy. Oh, actually, no, I won't say that. Yeah, I will, fuck it, I will, fuck you. Um, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you, um, you're, you're a uh, douchebag. Cause, and you know what? You could be a guy girl, I don't give a fuck who you are. You're a nobody. Because you're pathetic and you had no balls to write back to me. No balls, no kindness, write back to me. Still haven't written back, pathetic. Um, this job, literally, the longer I do this and the more Ask Woodfits you watch, the more you're gonna realize that they say successfully is clues and you're gonna realize there's common themes about this, right? If you watch, this, if you watch all my episodes, 38 so far, you'll realize there's common themes. If you work out the common themes, you're smarter than me. Work out the common themes. You'll see it. I keep saying the same thing. If you can't, I regurgitate. Not regurg People always say you regurgitate the same thing. Okay, yeah, I do. But that's, then watch the best. You watch the best people in their trade. Anything they do, they're going to have common themes. You know what the common themes are? The, execute the basics at a high level, master the basics, and then just literally have passion for what you do. And then literally all the high performers, you see that. They just nail the basics and they push the same common theme. There's no shortcut, it's only hard work, and success, success takes years. I mean years. You might go fucking eight years without doing anything, but that ninth year might happen. Do you know why that ninth year happened? No, it didn't magically wake up and you became successful. Do you know what I was from? Consistency of fucking effort. Not waiting for the fucking pot at the end of the fucking rainbow and waking up going, oh my fucking God, I'm successful. People do my fucking head in about that. I didn't wake up, this happened, this took me years to get to this point. Even still at this point, it takes years. You have to consistently give effort. Too many of you don't want to give effort. Well, fucking unfortunately, you weren't built for this fucking life. Don't do it, do something else. Do something else, don't get to this career. Do, do something else that you know, you're not good, you're not passionate enough for this career. This, this career will beat you down every day of your life. And do you know why it beats you down? Because it's fucking got to me to this point. This is why I'm like this, because fucking I've seen it all. I'm not saying that I'm the most experienced because there's more, more experience than me. But fuck, man, it beats you down. Just get up and do it again. And then fucking, my, my thing is I'm a resilient guy. I'm just resilient. And my thing is, if you piss me off enough, I'm just gonna do it just to piss you off. And ask anyone, like, you tell me to go left, I'm gonna go right. You tell me I can't do something, I'll fucking do it. And that's what I love to see in my, I love to see in people. I love, I love that. I love when they're successful regardless how many people say they can't do it. That's true success in life. True success to me is doing something when, when, the, whole, when the whole world said you couldn't do it, Alex. 
And everyone say, he can't, you can't do that. There's no industry for you, you can't do that. Watch me. I love that, watch me. Watch me what I'm gonna do in the next few years, just watch. All the people who hate on me right now, just watch. Keep, keep hating, watch me. And when you all say it can't be done, I'll say it can be done. Keep projecting your insecurities on me, I'll keep beating it. That's all I can say. And if, you, if you're watching this and you probably are and you say about that note, please, you know what, I, I actually feel sorry for you because you could write that, you took your time to write that. It just makes me sad about life that you have to project and you're so insecure within your own abilities. Anyway, such is life. I wouldn't write a note, by the way, I'll just tag you on Facebook and call you out. Because you know what, I have, I have cojones. I, I have ability to not give one flying fuck about what anyone thinks about me. Not even my own mother I care about what she thinks about me. Yeah, I want her to love me, but fuck man, I just need, all I need, when I start this, I need my parents, I told you, I need my parents support. Now I need no one, I need no one. I just need myself, my self-belief. That's all I need in here, in here. Uh, maybe, maybe a good woman by your side who can pull my head in, maybe one, that's it. Taylor Purton. Just wondering if you could recommend a few exercises for a female cricketer, 21 years old, opening batter and Thomas wicket, and wicket keeper. Thomas, how you going? Good, bro. We see you, Thomas. Big Tom, a good man, Tom. A good man, a great man. Go again. <laughs> Just wondering if you could recommend a few exercises for a female cricketer who's 21 years old, who's opening batter and wicket keeper. There's a guy you should watch if you're interested in cricket preparation. Tag him in this. Stephen Jones. Now this guy is, now oh, I'll tag Stubbsy as well. So Stubbsy and Stephen Jones, right? Stephen Jones is a former bowler, fast bowler, who is now a strength and conditioning coach for cricket. He integrates the two. He's one of the best I've ever seen at understanding the combination of the technical skill of cricket bowling, of bowling, and also this understanding the skill of strength and conditioning combined. Unbelievable, right? <coughs> that being said, the basics, right? I get cricketers all the time ask me, hi, I'm a fast bowl, what specific exercises should I be doing? Okay, let's break this down. This is gonna probably put a lot of cricketers offside of me, but fuck it, who cares? I'll be honest with you, cricketers in general, and I'm generalizing here, and I'm sorry if you're a cricketer and you watch this show, call me an asshole, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna generalize. In general, cricketers are weak, weak as piss. And when I say fucking weak, I'm a 13 year old girl stronger than you, right? One, that's a generalization, but fuck it, how it is. They're overweight. Right? They're fucking lazy, right? Sorry, Tom. Sorry, they're fucking lazy. Does he play cricket? No, fuck. Fuck. Oh, well, fuck it. Lazy, weak, and don't take any criticism when it comes to physical preparation. Go, it's a skill-based sport, which it is. I don't need to do it. I'm gonna tell you this, right? Out of all the sports I've dealt with, and you've seen that, I've dealt with a shitload of sports. I reckon I've trained every sport in the world I've trained. I've trained ultimate frisbee. I've trained lawn bowls. I've trained a, te a table tennis player once. I've trained it all, you name a sport, I've trained it, right? What I'm trying to say, multiple sports. I've programmed for, you don't play cricket, do you? I oh, see, I fucking told you, Alex, I fucking knew it. Still, but he played cricket. The culture in cricket's lazy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh well, Thomas, it is, right? We're talking about, I have, if, if there's a sport on this earth, porn star, being a porn star is a sport to me, right? What I'm trying to say is, it's a sport I've programmed for, right? I've programmed for every sport under the sun. What I'm trying to say, I've got a unique skill set. I don't program for one sport, I've programmed for multitude of sport. Multiple, multitude of different movement patterns, multitude different of um, physiological demands. Let me say this to you, right? And this brings in a good little thing that Mike Ball was talking about recently. Sport specificity is a fucking lie. Anyone who says it is, it's a fucking lie, right? I'm gonna give you an example, right? I'm not gonna say his name, right? I don't really like him. Because I'm not gonna say his name, because I I'm just don't like him, right? I'll tell you this, I used to train him, right? He used to be, I'm not even gonna say sport, fuck it. He used to be a BMX rider, fuck it, right? He used to train at Woodford's, right? Back in the early days of Woodford's, right? When, back in the early days when I wasn't as harsh as I was, right? These days I have a fuse that's probably that short, right? If you say something back to me and you don't believe me, why the fuck are you hiring me? That's for anyone out there. If someone hires you and they don't listen to you, tell them to fuck off. You don't need their money. Well, I don't, I don't. I'm not saying I make a lot of money because I told you money doesn't mean, for me, this is not about the money. You, People might think that for me, trust me. You can ask him behind the fucking camera, it ain't about the fucking money, right? I just need a roof on my head, and a, I, I can eat, and my family can eat, I'm happy, right? I'm happy in life, right? I'm not one of those people that needs money to, be, to beat my chest to be so happy. You know what I like beating my chest about? 
I like to beat my chest about that I can look at, back at my life and say that I achieved something and I left this industry in a better state than when I found it, right? And that's called fucking legacy. And for all those motherfuckers out there, you can't buy legacy with money. You can't. So I don't give a fine fuck you, tell me you make six figures. For me, I don't give a fuck. What's your legacy? And legacy to me is dictated by how many lives you change or how, many, how, how, how you change the industry and how you improve the industry. And that's what I care about, right? Where the fuck was I? I've gone on a tangent here. No, not big. What did I say? I talked about fuck. Oh, I was on a real good thing about this. Quick, keep going. Come on. Where the fuck was I? Cricket. And I talk about sports. I've trained for multiple different sports, right? And the biggest thing that I've found is oh, the BMX rider. No, you don't want to have to BMX rider, right? And then what he said to me. This is bringing out the question, right? He said to me his coach was programming for him, right? And I said that's great, but. What my job is, I, I think I know a lot about my what physical preparation, right? Oh, but he said do this move, make it real specific. I said, yeah, but you don't even have the general base yet. Let's get the general base and then go a little bit more specific. I'll give you an example for everyone out there, right? A squat is going to be more sport specific than a bicep curl. A deadlift is going to be more specific than a tricep push down. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Yes, there's more exercise to get more transference, but... All in all, the only true way of sports specific training is the fucking skill itself, correct? So anyone, this guy used to come back to me and say, oh, this is what my coach is doing. Never listen to me, right? The thing that I find funny is how many idiots in their sport think there's a sports specific way of training. I will go to the deathbed and say 95% of what I, I, I say 90, 90% of what I do with most athletes is GPP. What I mean by that is, they're gonna do generally the same movements. I'll give you an example. Will a baseball player and a basketball player or a cricket player get better at getting stronger and more powerful to the lower body? Yes or no? Yes. So i.e. they're all gonna squat, deadlift, do some form of jump, land or sprint. Yes or no? Of course they are. Of fucking course they are because every athlete will get better at, better at their sport and become more robust, so big resilient to injury. 90% what they do. That 10% will be specifically individualized based on individual, based on their body type, their previous history, right? Their injury history, okay? What they're competent at, where they're at in their, in their, in their journey of fitness. Are they competent at that movement? Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Too many people think that they're above that or their sport is fucking, their sport is um, um, a, a special snowflake sport, so they have to be special. Let me tell you this. It's not special, right? It's not. There's no such thing as sports-specific training. Sports-specific training is the skill. Yes, there are more exercises more specific than others. I understand that. There's something called Bunchek's model of sports-specific development, like general, special, specific movements, right? I understand that. Yes, I understand that. And there are going to be more, uh, there are going to be exercises that are more specific. But in general, especially talking about Australian athletes, most just need a general base, a general base of strength. Most don't even fucking have that. Most move like shit. Most are immobile. Most are weak to the glutes. I'm telling you why, because I've seen it so many times, right? Yes, once they are at that, they've developed their general base and they're efficient and they move well. Yes, you can choose exercise that's more specific and have more transference. But in general, just develop the basics. Get competent at the basics, master the basics, and choose exercises that, uh, that, that fit you and your criteria, your body type, your previous injury history. For fuck's sake, there's nothing like sports specific training is a fucking myth. The worst people do it as well is soccer. I've never, like, soccer just it, it blows my mind, some of the shit I see. Going on a BOSU ball and standing on it doesn't make sports specific, you fucking idiot. Do you know what it does? It, it, it makes it unstable. Do you know what happens when you make it something like, where you're trying to lift weights on an unstable surface? You can't lift as much. If you can't lift as much, do you know what happens when you, when you can't apply as much force in the ground? If you can't apply as much force in the ground, you're not going to get stronger. It makes no fucking sense. Until the day we're playing sport on an unstable surface, I'll keep training my guys on stable surface. Absolutely fucking stupid. Whoever fucking came up with that term, fuck off. It's actually fucking, it's annoying because I come, when you come from a background of understanding and understand that everything is about action, reaction, and relative strength, right? If you're gonna apply more force around, you're gonna jump high, run quicker. It makes fucking sense. In fucking what world do you fucking stand on a BOSU ball and call it functional? I'd call it unfunctional, right? Uh, unless you're gonna be playing on a, an earthquake going 24 7, yes. Oh, you know what? I'd go to fire and say this. 
Whoever made the Bosu ball, I'm going to burn it. I probably will buy one just for the sake of this video, and I'm going to burn it. I don't know why. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. And then someone will say, why did you buy it? I don't know, to burn it. I think it's, I think unstable surface is okay if you come back from like a ligament injury for proprioception. Other than that, it's fucking useless. Useless. I don't care what you say. You can bring up anything you say. I don't care. For all the unstable people out there on the phone, whatever. I don't give a fuck. It's stupid. I don't care if you base your, if you base your training systems off that, you're dumb. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you're dumb. You're stupid. Don't ever talk to me. That's going to sound really harsh, but fuck it. I don't really need any more. Fr I've got no friends anyway, so fuck it. I don't. I've got fucking brick and that's it. I honestly could be in, a, in an island with brick and I'd be the greatest time ever. Man, do you understand how good that kid is? How quickly would you eat him? Him and I, him and I together. No, I wouldn't eat him. No way. I wouldn't eat him. No. Well, I'd go, I'd go hungry. I'd go hungry for him. Just because he's a great guy. He's the only guy I could meet that he's just, in, a, in Australia that I've ever met, they've gone, ah, oh, I like this kid. He's just, he just wants to learn. He just, he, you, could, you could punch him in the face, he'd come back 10 times harder. Like Rocky, I told you he's like that Rocky scene that I love, right? And Creed is talking to his trainer, right? Apollo Creed talking to his trainer. And his trainer says this, after, they, uh, after he's facing Rocky in Rocky 1. This is Rocky 2. And he said, what are you afraid of, Duke? What are you afraid of? And he said, I've seen you beat that man like you never beat that man before, but the man kept coming. Bricks like that, right? You could beat him up, tell him he's doing it wrong, but he was come better and get better. That's the truth, that's resiliency. That's what you want in people. The issue with today's society is, I don't want to go too far in this, is no one's resilient. People get knocked down, they don't come again. My thing is, I just get knocked down, I go again. Knock down, come again. I will keep coming at you. That's what makes me successful. And if you, if you notice any things about most successful people in the world, they'll keep coming. They'll keep, they'll be resilient, work out what they did wrong, do it again. If you find a theme in that brick, you're just, you're a resilient motherfucker. After meeting his father though, like I met his father in that thing, it was fantastic. Good to meet Brick's father. Well, Ren, it was great to meet him. Look, Brick's a mute kid. And then you meet his dad. His dad actually communicates on a, on a level that you'd be like, well, he's not retarded like Brick, so. Uh, Sorry, Mum, I apologise, but fuck it. Look at uh, uh, Lukey Nicole. Uh, I was wondering how, how you determine the right amount of set to do for an exercise. Obviously, the rep range is indicative of your goal, but I see varying sets in a lot of programs and was wondering what your knowledge is on this. Well, think about it this way. If you... If you this all comes down to what we talk about dose response relationship. Not a lot of people know, understand, in, in the fitness industry in general, they have no fucking idea, idea about the dose response. So in the fitness industry, everyone thinks, I'm gonna make a real stupid way of saying it, volume good. That's how they think. They think three sets is good, four must be a four, good, five better. No, 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 no. If you're doing, my thing is, my thing is it's about quality. What is the minimal dose you can give for the optimal response, right? We want the minimal dose for the optimal response. So if you've got a novice, it makes sense. They need less sense to someone who's highly, uh, who more highly trained. Obviously, it depends on the individual basis. But my thought process is this. Why the fuck do seven sets of shit when you can do two, three sets of high quality? But our, but our thinking is, if you're not beat up, your heart rate's not up, you're not sweating hard, you're not fucked after your session, it's a useless session. That's how we're being taught to think. That's how we're being taught to think. Fuck you, Commando. That's how we're being taught to think, right? Because the biggest loot, TV shows like The Biggest Loser came out and it, it, mate, it got us to think, hey, if you're not flog someone or you don't beat the fuck out of someone in a session, it's a useless session, right? That's how we're taught to think. Where I'm the opposite, I'm like, I'll re every day of the week it's all quality, 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 quality. If you can only do three sets of quality, that's fine. We're all gonna, that's when we do three sets. So how you need to look at it is this. What's their training age? Also, what, what can they handle as an individual? It's called overregulation. Base the load of that session based on how they feel during that exact moment. If they feel good, load them up. If they don't feel good, taper it to how they feel. But don't just fucking go, oh, I'm gonna do five, six sets here and that's it, and I don't give a fuck how they move it or how they feel. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's bigger, so that's stupid. That's ignorant. That's dumb. That's shit that then you're not a trainer, you're just a fucking idiot who just throws volume at people. Stop doing it. Choose the sets based on their training status and how much they can handle. Obviously it makes sense if they're, in, if they're a novice. We want to get the skill acquisition. So yeah, you can do more sets, but you just maybe do body weight. Once again, this is, this is a wide open question. Ask yourself this, what is the minimal amount of dose to get the optimal response that you want? That's you as a coach. Everything's about super compensation, the athlete adapting, getting stronger. Go next session, you gotta do a little bit more, get them stronger. That's what we call super compensation, that's what we call training. Training is that, that, that is the underlying thing of tr training. Honestly, if we break it down, we can talk all these guys who are smart with PhDs, all this shit who can't communicate in the right way, who can't pick up, can't pull chicks. I, for that reason, couldn't even talk to a fucking girl with these PhDs.
literally, if you're a PhD, that's fine, but some of these guys have been too institutionalized, but they're, they're so smart, but they, Dave Tate talks about this. Op- they, they try and make a simple topic too overly complex to make themselves feel better. Like, a training's so simple. Apply overload, apply, make it to the individualized person, and let the, let the body supercompensate, and then once they've supercompensate, provide another stress. But we make it too overcomplicated. Simplify. I'm the, I'm the most fundamentalist person you can meet. I'm, I'm the basics, master basics. I'm a sim, I, I master basics. I'm, uh, I'm uh, a master of the basics. I simplify everything. But that's that's the way you should be doing it. Don't over, we overcomplicate everything. Periodization, all this shit. It's almost like so guys can keep a fucking job. Keep it simple. Fuck me. If they, if you can't if you can't communicate complex theories into the most simplest way, you're not doing your job. That's how I feel myself. I talk to, if I talk to PhD, I'm like. Has this guy, is this guy a virgin? Like, that's how I look at everything. Not, not a bad thing if you are a virgin, I don't give a fuck, fuck but that's the understand what I'm trying to say. It's like, you should be able to communicate to everyone. To a soccer mom, to three, to the eight year old, you'd be c- communicate complex topics to that individual. If not, you're no good at your job. That's how I see it. I mean, keep it simple, apply overload, individualize to that person. Guys, that's episode 38 to Ask Woodford. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for viewing, subscribe below. Thank you. Should I have my virgin thing? I'll throw it on a virgin.